Like, quote, is this the band, the Rolling Stones, or the magazine? The, the magazine. So the Rolling Stone. The Rolling Stone. <laughs> oh, that's uh, cool, man. I just want to. I I just want our listeners' question. They somebody asked in the chat to clarify. So oh, I just okay, want. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, direct quote from the Rolling Stone, not the Rolling Stones, but the magazine. Well, both like us, so I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Chuckles in the Fire Ants, a.k.a. the musical sensation. Sweeping the nation. And uh, he has, he's done a lot. He's gone to, and this will make more sense for context, he's gone to a lot of Big 12 basketball tournaments uh, over the years for basketball. He saw the final KUMU game at Arrowhead, the border war. Oh. I'm going with it. And uh, he's he's been to every MUKU basketball and football game for the entirety of his physical life here on Mother Earth. Give it up for this week's guest to the podcast, Kyle Chuckwagon Ultikin. Wow, rolling applause from the live audience here. Wow, uh, very, very excited to have you back on the podcast. Uh, it's great to be here, Mike. Live. Live, yeah. We, we did a live podcast before, but... But I was not in person. You were not in person. You were... Uh, where were you at? I was in normal Illinois. Actually, I lied. I was in Bloomington, Illinois. I live in Bloomington now. You were sitting on your couch in Bloomington, Illinois. And now I'm sitting on a couch in Seattle, Washington. Life really is crazy. Life is crazy, and uh, God is real, and the devil's a liar. That's what I like like to live by. Amen. I uh, I've seen a theme this week. Mike Mike and I've been hanging out for like the last two weeks now. Uh, he likes to call me animals. He called me a doe today, like in that intro. He called me a doe, um, and uh, he called me a hippo earlier in the week. Uh, it's just been a wild ride. So, yep. You're. A, I didn't know you're a local animal expert. Well, I am really uh, influential in this movement. Maybe you've heard about it called uh, Wildlife Wednesday. I have heard of it, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, it's it's a worldwide movement, uh, just so other people, I know you you know about it, but other people don't. It's a worldwide movement. Yeah, let's hear uh, it. Basically, what you do is you wear a wildlife shirt on a Wednesday. Would these count as wildlife shirts? No, you wouldn't. Uh, they are great apparel for this week's episode. We're going to be talking a lot about the Kansas versus Missouri rivalry, this revered history. So, Rivalry. The best way this uh, this microphone actually works is it's pointed towards your mouth. Uh, so if you want to like reposition, you could just spin this black guy or the black holder of the microphone, uh, kind of in and out like this. <laughs> like if you like want to look at me and talk, you can kind of like turn it. Like oh, this. okay. Yeah, it's kind of pointed towards my mouth. That's a pointed yeah. away from your mouth. So I need to adjust like this. Oh, that's. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry, guys. This is my first time. Dude, also, the wires <laughs> today are going crazy. A crazy. Okay. Uh, we got somebody here on the live. This has been pretty fun. As we're getting things going here, uh, a topic of discussion this week has been the phrase Dave Clark and Dilly Dally. Ooh. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Philly farting. I'm not sure anybody in the world outside of one person says Philly farting, but we can see. Yeah, so what I'm curious for you guys, the listeners, is do you know what phrase Philly farting means? Drop in the chat, what does Philly farting mean? Is it the same thing as Philly Dally? My wife, Megan, repeatedly uses the phrase and has for multiple decades. Billy Farty. Well, you can come to find out this week after pressing her on the issue that no one else has heard this phrase, <laughs> Billy Farty. Well, that haven't heard it from her. Oh, her okay. friends had all heard of it from her. Yes, right. Yeah, the friends have all heard of it from her. But don't use it themselves and never heard anybody say it. Yes. So she reached out to her mother where she learned the phrase. And her mother corrected her saying, Fiddler, fiddler farting, or fiddle farting, fiddle farting. Fiddle farting around, fiddle, fiddle farting. Like you have a fiddle and you're just farting around on the fiddle. Yes. Not like you're from Philly and you're farting around the city. Yes, or just a farter from Philly. Yeah, yeah, you know. Just a gassy Philadelphian. Yeah, a gassy Philadelphian. <laughs> like, you're I don't not know. not a gassy Philadelphian. Uh, where do you think the phrase dilly dally? Oh, um, I think, well, you've heard of Dilly Bars, right? Dilly Bars. No, um, I don't really know. I think it's like Dairy Queen. Uh, so oh, Dairy Queen has a Dilly Bar. I think it's like a, like a, it's like a popsicle or not a popsicle. Sorry. It's got a stick. It's like a vanilla ice cream, uh, covered in like a, a chocolate exterior. And uh, so that's like a dilly bar. And so dilly dallying is whenever uh, you are kind of talking to your friends so long that your dilly bar starts to melt on your hand and it gets really sticky Um, because you eat them during the summertime, like whenever it's warm. And so it's melted. And so it's kind of like you're just kind of like ah, you're just kind of, you know, messing around or, or you're just not paying attention. You're taking too long to eat it. So it actually melts all over your hand and creates a big mess. And so that is where it's become dilly dallying oh i see yeah yeah it's so uh, it's from dairy queen okay do you like dairy queen uh i don't know it's i think it's i yes i used to have to tell people hey the easiest way to get to my house is to drive through a dairy queen parking lot uh people always got confused until they tried it um i did go to the dairy queen probably twice uh no, I think uh their food is just really terrible. But they're not. I mean, are they really known for their food? That's like a no. But I don't really like ice cream that much, so I'm going for food. It's I'd probably say it's got to be C tier, D tier fast food. How many per, like what percentage of the U.S. population do you think doesn't like ice cream? Like, are you a one percenter? Like, are you in the one percent that like actually doesn't like ice cream? People often refer to me as a one percenter, so that makes sense. Um, this could be the only reason uh, why they would say it. But, uh, okay, I just want to clarify for you guys. I I don't hate ice cream. Like, it's just not my favorite thing. Like, I don't like really sweet things. I prefer sour things. Here, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. Sponsored by Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. Uh, shout out to Sour Patch Kids. Um, if you guys are looking uh, for people to uh, Sour Patch, if you are looking for people to to kind of push your merch, um, I'm your man. But uh, I, uh, I, so I don't love sweet things. But um, but uh, Munchie's House in Estes Park, Colorado, they have a sleepless in Seattle. Shout out to Seattle, um, where it's like uh, it's it's coffee ice cream with um, mocha chips in it. I love that. If we go back to Columbia, Missouri, M I Z, uh, Como, uh, Sparky's Ice Cream. Shout out to Sparky's Ice Cream. Uh, they have Oreo Speedwagon. It is a take on Ario Speedwagon, the band. It is coffee ice cream with Oreos in it. Um, so y- there's a theme here. I really like coffee ice cream or chocolate ice cream. Um, so it's not my favorite thing, uh, but I do it. Um, so, uh, hey, he doesn't like ice cream. That's just not human. Uh, yeah, thank you, Hercus Hernandez, <laughs> popping in the chat saying, hey, he doesn't like ice cream. That's just not human. Well, I I don't I don't hate I don't dislike ice cream. It's just not my favorite thing, guys. Okay, like 
I don't. Well, I would say I don't like it, but like it's fine, guys. Okay. I swear I'm a human. Guys, I'm a human. Yep. OG. From our own brain spheres called Space Trash. Space Trash. Now, this is the first time you popped on uh, the podcast is that we were with our friends Billy Bob and Topher Todd talking about the song. Alliteration is real. Uh, just trying to save Earth. Well, we were presenting the idea of Space Trash. Space trash. So could you remind us in the audience, uh, just as we're kind of getting into this, like what what is space trash and why is it such a big issue today? Yeah, uh, really, I just want to point you to the episode. Um, which episode was it? Number six. Uh, episode six of uh, of um, just trying to podcast or just trying to save Earth of space trash. It really was an enlightened enlightenment bill said uh or sorry billy bob i guess um said that potentially uh the earth would be the sun would be blocked out from the earth in 10 years because space trash is such a big idea um that seems a little outlandish to me but hey maybe uh he did say that well anyway space trash is uh so whenever people are flying um you know either they're putting satellites into orbit or they're flying um, ships into outer space, uh, they leave behind um, pieces of their ships and uh, and just trash, or what we'd like to call space trash. And so that's just orbiting uh, the Earth. And so if, potentially, like our hypothesis is, is that potentially so much trash would be left in the atmosphere that it would be uh, unsafe to fly out because one of those pieces of trash could um, ultimately destroy uh, the ship. So... It's it's big. On the, the YouTube of this episode, I'll put like a link and like a card so we can just oh. click on that uh, whenever we yes. upload the, the full version of this. Because this is actually a two part episode. I don't know if you knew that. So this is going to be part uh, Missouri versus Kansas rivalry, part space trash. Uh, so whenever we release this, like the full um, <clears throat> full published video, not just like the live video like we're doing now. Oh okay. That's. So, uh, That's wild. Technology around. is crazy, guys. So, yeah, stick around for part two uh, after we talk about Missouri versus Kansas. And I wanted to give a little teaser because it was just a perfect segue. Uh, just a nice little tease. That, we have some more comments. That I kind of, uh, as Kirkus Hernandez was talking here about ice cream, I kind of agree with him because I love sherbet more than most ice cream. I actually really relate to that. I, I do like ice cream, but I would prefer an orange sherbet over Do you, do you guys say sherbet or sherbet? Yeah, do you say sherbet or sherbet? Is it the same thing? I don't know. I think I I think so. I had a roommate that always called it sherbet. Sherbet. And I, I thought it was sherbet. I grew up calling it sherbet. Maybe that's a Missouri versus where's your, where's your roommate from? Kansas City. On the Kansas side or the Missouri side? Missouri. Well, I can't help that guy there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Independence. Maybe he's got Kansas roots to him. Whoa. Why does it have to be Kansas people that say sherbet? Come on now. Uh, Kansas sucks. Which whoa, is whoa, whoa, this whoa. Episode, Dang. Uh, just this trying is... to talk Kansas Jeez. versus Missouri. So, uh, if you I didn't can't. know, if you're not big into college sports, there is a massive rivalry between the University of Missouri and the University of Kansas, represented uh, a dirty Jayhawk himself, Kansas. Uh, the camera's up there. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm trying, trying to get this out of the way. Is what yeah, I'm trying I got to you. do this. Uh, rock shock, baby. Rock shock. On. I've got my machine here. We're, we're rocked out here. Uh, so this guy, crazy enough, is uh, a, a fan of Kansas, even though he is a graduate of the University of... Uh, oh, we got Cameron. Lee. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Uh, welcome to the podcast and the live stream here. Good to have you here. Uh, nice to see you, Cameron. Expert on all things co- collegiate sports, 
what is your Mount Rushmore of rivalries between schools? Like, just objectively. Not, like, personally, like, what do you prefer, like, what do you like the most? But, like, if you had to say, what are the Mount Rushmore? Yes, that's a great question. Mount, Mount Rushmore. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great one. I... Well, of course, for me, um, since Mount Rushmore is definitely subjective, I have to put Kansas and Missouri on there. Now, now, do I think that makes the Mount Rushmore of collegiate sports? Uh, probably not. Of of rivalries in collegiate sports, probably not. But that would make mine. Um, so you want me to do an objective? You don't want me to do subjective. Okay, objective. Um, I'm trying to be objective here, guys. I would say. Ohio State, Michigan, uh, North Carolina, Duke, uh, man, maybe Texas, Texas A&M, uh, or maybe Texas, Oklahoma. I don't know. We'll just lump them in there because nobody likes Texas uh, down with the horns. Um, a, uh, Auburn, Alabama, and then maybe, uh, I don't know, man, like – it, they got any like I know Washington is rivals with uh with um with Oregon. With Oregon. Uh Cameron says Nebraska, Oklahoma. Sorry, my man, this isn't nineteen ninety eight. Uh <laughs> I guess like if you just thought like the history of collegiate sports, like what does Cameron from the top of his chest, Nebraska versus A and M versus Oklahoma. Uh because so this is where guys, I'm an I'm an old head. Um this is just like this is just pushing a lot of buttons. I am not for conference realignment. I don't like it. Um, I don't enjoy Mizzou. Uh, I'm a Mizzou grad. Um, if you can't tell by my shirt, I am a Mizzou grad. M I Z baby. Um, I I don't like conference realignment. So Nebraska and Oklahoma don't play each other anymore. Nebraska hasn't been good in God knows how long. And uh, so uh, maybe it's uh, – I mean, I know it used to be a rivalry. I don't, I don't think so anymore. Uh, but I don't like Nebraska, so I'm with you, Cameron. I, I don't know if you like Nebraska or not. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that's kind of – makes me judge you more now. Dang. Okay. Uh, family of Cornhuskers. All right. Um, so, yeah, I would say Michigan, Ohio State, uh, Duke, North Carolina, um, Maybe, probably, I'd say probably like Auburn, Alabama, at least current. And um, I will say Texas and Oklahoma. Okay. Now, how does that line up with your subjective Mount Rushmore of collegiate sports rivalries? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mine definitely, I mean, Missouri, Kansas would be on there. Uh, for sure, I love I love that rivalry. As somebody that grew up a Kansas fan, went to Mizzou, I love that they're playing each other again. Um, I get really excited about it. Uh, I do. I like the uh, I like um, Duke, North Carolina. That's a fun That's a fun one to watch. Um, I don't really care about the rest of them. Like Michigan, Ohio State is is kind of fun because I like to make fun of both of them. And uh, maybe. Texas and Oklahoma versus the Big 12 because they're leaving and nobody likes them anyway. So we'll call that a rivalry. Okay. The Big 12 versus those two. Subjective Mount Rushmore has any implications? <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble with my mics, guys. I'm I'm just not good with mics. Uh, my keys or microphones. <laughs> yeah. a great question i think i mean part of it is like you know just coast east coast west coast bias um so i just don't i just don't think people talk about that rivalry that much um they don't play each other regularly anymore so again conference realignment uh anti that um but it happens so they just don't play each other very much anymore and i'd say like neither like kansas is obviously they're a blue blood um in basketball so they're just kind of like um, an elite school in that, but I don't, I don't think either one of them is like a major sports program. And, um, so, you know, like 
I think it's just like what is generating hype in the country. I don't think um, it is generating hype in the country as much as maybe it is generating hype uh, in in the Midwest or in like our little sphere of, of Missouri versus Kansas. But I am I'm pro. Uh, I really like Missouri and Kansas both. Me too. And I'm, I want to make a case. Missouri, a Missouri versus Kansas collegiate sports rivalry should be in the objective Mount Rushmore. Let's hear it. Okay, so here it is. I um, love it. I have three main points. Number one, my, my first point of why uh, this sports rivalry is top four in the nation is because it's rooted in history. Most people don't know this. If you're not from Missouri, you think of Missouri, you're not a Civil War buff. Bum, bum, bum. A buff of American history that this was rooted in, uh, we call it the border war, right? In his story. Yeah. In our history. <clears throat> Santa Claus, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that this, this rivalry actually uh, precedes uh, the collegiate sports rivalry. So what happened is back in the 19th century, uh, why did I say that wrong? 19th century. Okay, so we call it Bleeding Kansas. Bleeding Kansas. And there was this, this war. Do you, do you know much about this war? Uh, the Civil War? Well, post-Civil War? And the Civil, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Anyways, okay, cool. Uh, so, I feel like Bleeding Kansas was actually before the Civil War. Maybe it was the Civil War. Yeah, I think it was like a part of like kind of what led up to it, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, so... Tensions were high in that time. Tensions were high. So what was going down was basically uh, the field was shaking on the state of Missouri, which... It is. There, Some Missouri fans like to claim that they were in the right. They definitely were not. No. No, we were in the wrong. Correct. Yeah, so there was uh, the, the free state... Or Kansas was trying to become a state, right? And they, yes. they were like a free people. Like they were anti-slavery. And there were Missourians who were pro-slavery. And there was this war going on, right? Uh, so you had the Kansas Jayhawkers. Yep. And then you had the Missouri Bushwhackers. So these kind of like renegade... Whacking. Whack, whack. Renegade uh, militias that were... They were battling over Kansas being a part of the, the Union. Is that correct? I believe the so. The Confederacy? Union. Okay, yes. So... Uh, I, I asked Chat GPT uh, this question. If you guys aren't familiar with Chat GPT, look it up. Look it up. There's a lot going on. But Chat GPT actually told me uh, some some false information about me. Oh, good. Uh, which was a surprise for Chat GPT. And then I corrected it, and you're like, yes, you're right. Uh, so Chat GPT said one of the most cor- notorious episodes of the the bleeding of Kansas, like this this war between Missouri and Kansas. Was, um, was this raid on Lawrence, Kansas, which is now home of the University of Kansas. Uh, it was led by a pro-slavery militia led by William Quantrill. Uh, that they burned down most of the town. They killed a bunch of people. It was like this huge deal. They were known as the Quantrill's Raiders. Uh, but in a first Just a shameless one, or added plug, nobody likes Raiders. <laughs> yeah, I had to plug. Nobody likes the Raiders. But in the first version of this, we had uh, Quantrill uh, as from Kansas, from Missouri. So this is just a public service announcement. Just this is just plugging something from the internet, guys. I don't know if this is still in the state of Missouri. I'm going to do some research for y'all. Could be. Could be wrong. The internet never lies, though. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, the internet has never lied. Like, there's always truth. Yeah. People yeah. respect it. All right, so... Like, don't, nec- don't, like, always trust it, but it's always true. That's my my, my, my philosophy. Exactly. So, anyways, Quantrill was was with the Missouri side. He, oh, yes, he yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm then, tracking, uh, I'm tracking, baby. James Brown. Let me check my notes here. James Brown. James Brown. Uh, led the, the, the Kansas militia. I assume you mean not the CBS broadcaster. Not the CBS broadcaster. Okay. But basically, uh, what ends up happening is that Kansas ends up being a free state, and Missouri's a slave state. Even though they were a 
flip states. Yes, they were part of the Union, but still had slaves. Exactly. Uh, so, it, 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 this, this was going on Civil War. <clears throat> Even post that, there was a lot of political conflict, really in these deep-rooted deeply rooted in the community of Missouri and Kansas, like this hate for each other. Because in the history of our states of merging, we would go over to the other place, kill people, loot their land, and then go back to our home state. Yeah. Uh, despicable. Despicable actions. There, there's hate between the Union and Missouri. Some real barosity. Real barosity. I think it's like Velociraptor Ocity. Okay, so uh, and now I wanted to get into into this. So there is this, this this point number one is that there is this history, right, of the bleeding Kansas, of this war between Missouri and Kansas. That's point number one. Point number two of why Missouri versus Kansas should be in the Mount Rushmore. You ready for this? I'm ready. Name a better current rivalry. A rivalry in college sports that has better colors than red and blue and black and gold. Those are some powerful colors. Red and blue. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Black and gold contrast so well against each other. Red and blue contrast so well against each other. They, the color schemes of the universities themselves in their branding represents contrast how different we are in this battle between us now what i want to do is separate us from the history of of our state not to say that people who are missouri fans are pro slavery that's not what i'm saying yeah i i don't believe that okay great just to, just, just so we, just to make sure that we have to be <laughs> hey, clear hey, hey, yeah, we are anti-slavery yeah. right uh, but the, this podcast is anti-slavery but the the hatred between Kansas and Missouri, there, there's this contrast between how Kansas sucks and Missouri is amazing. That's what the rivalry is based upon. No, that's like, no, <laughs> like, the, the, like there's like there's there's this contrast, with, like like you know contrasting. So can so let me clarify just so we're saying this. Kansas sucks, Missouri doesn't. Yes. Okay. Like, okay. There's a stark contrast. Okay, that's the stance that this podcast is taking. <laughs> yes, just trying to podcast is saying Kansas is the worst, Missouri is the worst. Oh, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding this line of uh, thinking correctly. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. I disagree, but I hear what you're saying. <laughs> okay, okay. So our colors themselves are contrasting, and uh, they're, they're not similar at all. Because what, what I feel about – so people talk about the Army-Navy rivalry. Can't even think of their colors. Like, what are the, what are their colors? I don't know, blue and silver for the navy, and like green. Yeah, see, they're they're not camo. They're, they're not great. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I respect the military. Wait, the army's got to be like what? I think they're like tan, maybe green. But I was, it doesn't really pop. I'm just talking about the brand. It pop, pop. It doesn't pop. So I think that like there's there's a lot about college sports that just flash. You know. You don't think like Michigan's like Michigan like blue and maize versus like kind of that scarlet and silver like that. No, I think that I think that Michigan and Ohio State are on the objective Mount Rushmore. Oh, I'm just saying this is why Missouri. So it's not like they have to be the best, but the work it just equals. I got you. I got you. All right. So the color scheme. Okay. So wait, who's on your objective one? Well, I'm about to get to that. Oh, okay, I'm okay. That. My bad. Because I'm, I'm gonna make this case and then I'm gonna say. I don't know what's coming, people. So I'm just I'm just here for the ride, like you. Yes. So then my third point is that. So I don't know if you knew this, but the University of Missouri invented homecoming in 1911. I have heard that claim. Yes, in 1911, uh, Missouri invented homecoming, and what they did. I was a student for the hundredth. I remember it. Yeah, 2011, right before I was a freshman at the University of Missouri, Chester Brewer, the 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 athletic director. Great great grandfather of our friend Quinn Brewer. Yes. Uh, shout out to Quinn. Happy birthday, Quinn. Happy birthday, Quinn. Wait, today's his birthday? It is. Okay, well, let's just take a second. To, we'll cut it out, but let's just, like, for the live show, like, let's just sing happy birthday. Everybody. Do you want to, like, call him and we can do it live? Oh, 
Yeah, get your phone. Oh, he's answering. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Cha cha. Happy birthday, dear Quinn. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, man. Hey, say hi to everybody on in the world. Did you know that your great great grandfather Chester Brewer started started homecoming at the University of Missouri? Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, we had to interrupt our live podcast to tell you that your great 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 grandfather Chester Brewer. Oh wait, great great grandfather. Yeah, great great. Sorry, great great grandfather Chester Brewer is in homecoming and contributed to um, the Missouri Kansas rivalry. Mount Rushmore of Michigan sports rivalries. This is factual. Yes. Yeah, well, congratulations, Quinn, and we, we wish you the happiest of birthdays. So back in 1911, uh, Quinn Brewer's great great grandfather Chester, Chester Brewer, he invented homecoming. Brewer Fieldhouse. The Brewer Fieldhouse. So what the issue was, I believe that they played the game in Kansas City, but then uh, they were having the game at home, and they were trying to get a big crowd at home. Uh, so Chester Brewer's idea was to invite all this alumni because they would play it in the middle, so they would have like this big draw of, a, of uh, alumni from both sides. But then they were playing it in Columbia for some reason, and so Chester Brewer was trying to figure out how we do, how can we get the most fans here. And then he's like, "Wait, we we love our alumni. We're the best university in the world. Why don't we have this annual tradition of inviting our alumni back for for this uh, big game every year? And that year they were playing the Kansas City Surge, right? So like this is like the perfect one. It's like the best rivalry in college sports. Best. And but he never could have in, in imagined." Which would spread to universities all over the world, all over America. And I'm going to help Kyle with his microphone. No, it's good. We're golden. We're golden, baby. Okay, we're golden. I just can't move it. Okay. Uh, can you do move it like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. Okay, there we go. Hello? Hello. Okay. All right, that's so good. Uh, so that, that's my third point, is that uh, the, the Kansas-Missouri rivalry uh, contributed to the, tri- the invention of the tradition of homecoming. And those are my three We're coming points. home. We're coming home. So you're talking about Duke, North, North Carolina, that being in the, the objective Mount Rushmore of sports rivalries? Yeah. Like, they're burnt orange. That's a horrible color. Uh, like Texas. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a... That was one of my main points against Texas. Okay, so what I meant to say was Duke versus North Carolina, those colors, they look very similar. They're both blue, right? Whereas us, we look very different. Red and blue versus black and gold. Like, it it is clear we are very different, right? But when you watch a Duke-North Carolina game, you're like, it's like basically the same team. People confuse them all the time. (laughs) Yeah, totally. And it's not rooted in history. Powder blue, dark blue. Yeah, totally different. I agree. And what what aspect of their rivalry contributed to uh, a revolution in the game or in in, in the, the game of football? Like homecoming. Now, anything in <laughs> basketball? No. Yeah, they don't do anything in basketball. Well, like, they, they didn't create any, like, their rivalry didn't create anything, like, from it. That's what I'm saying. It's like, the rivalry between Missouri and Kansas was this huge game. Mm. And he never could have imagined Chester Brewer, Quinn Brewer's great-great-grandfather, that he would create this thing that would go on beyond the two. But that's how strong our rivalry is. That's what I'm saying. That's, like, that's one of my points. So you talk about Texas versus Texas Tech or Texas versus Oklahoma, right? Uh, Texas A&M, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Texas Tech versus Texas A&M. Texas so, Tech, home of Patty Mahomes, baby. Yeah, so those two, like Texas A&M and the University of Texas, like they have horrible colors. Uh, you don't have to tell me twice. Yeah, so what, what is, 
to contain them. Are they, they're like maroon or something like that. Yeah, something. Maroon and burnt orange. Like, for one, those are horrible color schemes, and they like they're not very contrast, if you ask me. Okay, so then we go to the Michigan Ohio State. Go H. Ohio. Go big blue. Go blue. <laughs> go big blue. Ah, big blue. Who cares? Yeah. Okay. It's not, but yeah, we can go see. Okay. So, go blue. Uh, that, that comes down to uh, w- what I see as that they they are in the mountain of it. There is hatred. Like so, if you go to the uh, if you go to the the Ohio State University on the week that they are playing Michigan, they lowercase t. What? Lowercase t. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, I said the didn't I? Yeah. They trained me wrong. Okay, so. Well, they've trained you right. But you're yeah, just wrong. <laughs> I, I got you. So what they'll do on Ohio State's campus is they'll, they'll put like an X over every M across campus. It's impressive. It is impressive. Dedication. Because there is dedication to the rivalry, right? Yeah. Okay. So Don't um, they sneak in and paint something too? Yeah, they sneak in. They do stuff. Like who else does that, right? Maybe Kansas versus Missouri. Maybe. Maybe. So that's why I think the Ohio State and Michigan should be on the Mount Rushmore. I argue agree. the case for why Mizzou versus Kansas should be. Yeah. Yep. Now, the other two, I basically could be swung a lot of ways. But I think those are the two best rivalries. So, like, those two, they have to get automatic bids. Well, I guess it just depends on what we consider the best. Like, again, I think it's like, because a lot, like, is like, yeah, do you, is it, do people outside of your region care? Like, if that's what we're considering best. I, I just don't know. Like, I would say, like, oh, like, if we're going history, like, vitriol between the schools. Uh, just anger, I guess. Like, uh, um, yeah, like, I definitely, I would definitely agree with you in that sense. I think if we're just going, like, man, people outside of that area care about it. Like, I don't know if there's as much cachet as some of those bigger ones. But, again, I think that's because of, like, the bias. But I I agree with everything you're saying. Okay. As long as you agree with everything I'm saying. So that's what I <laughs> yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you do agree with wholeheartedly 100% of what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Shout out. Hey. What I would like to do is I'm already made the claim that Kansas is the worst and Missouri is the best. Do you think you can make a case for why Kansas and Michigan should be in the same Uh, not a, probably not a great one, but yeah. Give us your best shot. Uh, well, 2022 national champs, baby. Okay. Um, it's there. It's in, um, writing. Um, it's in stone that, uh, that Kansas won the 2022, uh, college basketball, uh, national championship. Um, Mizzou, uh, they had an opportunity to hire Bill Self. They decided not to. They went. They went a different direction, and uh, maybe that decision potentially has haunted them ever since. I don't know. Um, they also, coincidentally enough, rejected John Calipari. So either uh, Mizzou is just anemic to like good coaches, or I will give them credit. Um, they hired. They hired uh, Coach Quinn, Crazy Quinn, and uh, so they were just a, maybe a little bit uh, early that uh, to that to that train that he just maybe wasn't ready. Um, for it, um, uh, I, I don't know. This is close. Uh, I like both campuses. Um, Kansas's, uh, uh, um, their campus might be a little bit nicer, but it's really close because I, I love Mizzou's campus, so it's it's great. Um, and uh, the f- the inventor of basketball, uh, coached at Kansas. The inventor of basketball. So J- James Naismith, first coach at Kansas. Um, the uh, the original rules of basketball are in can- at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Oh, really? That's pretty cool. It is, yeah. I they they bought them for like two and a half million dollars. I just had that. Just so. Had uh, we do have somebody dropping in the chat right now. Cameron saying Auburn versus Alabama would be a good one. I would agree Auburn. with that. I do agree with that. Especially recently. So, the 
but even in the history of it, I I think I I would agree. I I I would put that up there. Yeah, man, yeah. Both teams are both teams have been good. Bruce Pearl down there creating a juggernaut. Whatever Alabama's coach didn't I think he got fired or something. I don't Nate remember. Oats. Huh? Nate Oates. Nate Oates, but who was the one before that? Uh, I don't remember him. But yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Auburn Alabama I think is up there. You'd like to review them. What? Yeah, so number one is you said uh, you, you kind of hated on how they didn't have the, the coaches. Oh, uh, they do. They yeah, did. They, they have this historic. They have. They have. They have. Uh, but you're, are you forgetting about Norm Stewart? No, I think Norm's fine. Norm's great. Norm is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally great. Right. I was saying more recent, you know, since Norm Stewart, they haven't really been able to fill that void. I got they did have uh, uh, Mike Anderson for a while. That was Mike Anderson was a was a fun style of basketball. That was a fun uh, lack of winning. Forty minutes of hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not 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 the best. Okay, but uh, no, Mike Anderson was. What are you thinking of, Kim Anderson? Kim Anderson was not good. Oh, I was thinking of Kim. Anderson. Yeah, Mike Anderson. Yeah, Mike Anderson was good. Kim yes. Anderson was not good. Yes, yes Kim Anderson was not good. Mike Anderson was yeah, good. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I, I was like, man, you, you can't be hating on Mike Anderson. Come on now. I know. I know. Uh, I would say though, if you if you had to go to the state of your life within the confines of one of those universities, because you can't leave. Okay, well, so it's definitely Columbia. Uh, it's definitely Mizzou. My wife and I, um, shout out to Lucy, often say that if we, like, we kind of want to retire to Columbia. Columbia is our favorite city in the world. So I also lived there for, uh, like, what, 12 years, uh, 11 years. So really grew to love Columbia, Missouri. But Lawrence is great, too. Z-O-U. you. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Part two. Space Crash. Wait, we're not going through this all time? K- Kansas versus Missouri teams? No. Oh. Would you like to? Sure. I disagree with your list, so yeah. Okay. Uh, this is, this is, okay, so we'll cut this back in. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so our last segment is Missouri versus Kansas in an all time starting five for Kansas basketball. Wait, let's go through these stats up here really quick. What is this? Uh, wins. <laughs> Basketball wins. This is according to Bleacher Report. Oh, man. Stats for the basketball rivalry. Kansas, 173. We've already established Missouri is the best team. <laughs> is, that even, is this even a rivalry at this point <laughs> with these stats? It's like, this is like big brother, little brother kind of thing. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, they, well, so in the tournament, uh, kind of like mo- more modern basketball, they have three. Um, beforehand, they just kind of gave out championships. Like, they just did it to, like, the best team. Um, so, so Kansas would have five. But, yeah, in modern ones, they have three. 85, uh, 2008, 2022. Then consensus all American first team in the Section 101. Missouri has the five. Uh, NBA player, players from the Eastern Division versus the Kansas 52. Missouri has one and three. Really close stats. Really so close. Very close stats. However, very close. Neck and neck. Missouri still wins today. It's crazy how much Missouri is better than Kansas, even though. Uh, the fact that you call it Missouri is almost like a notch against it. So, 
Sharon. Sharon Collins. Sharon Collins. Sorry. No, you're great, man. And then that point here, uh, Darnell Valentine. Uh, Darnell Valentine. Oh, Darnell Valentine. Dang it. That's uh, close, man. Close. So, so close. So close. Okay, so what does those starting five mean in this situation? Um, uh, this is like recency bias. Um, so. Uh, I would change out Darnell Valentine is an exceptional point guard. I would probably, uh, I'm a Frank Mason Stan. I'm a Frank Mason Stan. Um, uh, you know, it's like, I like them. Like I'm, I'm for them. I, I'm pro them. Like I, I love those. I love that guy. Um, like I'm a Patrick Mahomes Stan as well. Um, so, Darnell Valentine, yeah, I'd replace with Frank Mason. Shooting guard, it is interesting that they push Sharon Collins. I think Sharon Collins is excellent. Um, I think you could probably make the case for a lot of people. Um, Sharon Collins is, I, uh, is an All-American. Um, he is a national champion. Uh, that's probably the one thing that Frank Mason doesn't have, and it was really unfortunate. Uh, they lost to Oregon. Um he was national player of the year that year. I think they probably should have won the title that year. That that team was unreal. Um, so, but yeah, um, that would be my big one is Frank Mason over Darnell Valentine. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, according to Bleacher Report, we have the Missouri all-time best in-game mark. Let me try to pronounce these names. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Steve Stepanovich, uh, Doug Smith. Uh, Derek Chivas, Anthony Peeler, and Phil Pressey. All right. Uh, Mr. Peeler, uh, you're good at pronouncing names and names, and uh, I'll give you that. You got, the, you got that going for you, Chuck. Thanks, uh, man. I got at least I got one thing. So you had one one contention on the Kansas uh, all time starting five. Do you have any contentions on the Missouri starting five? Man, I will be honest, I don't know enough about Missouri basketball history to be able to tell, um, to be able to point this. I would agree with Anthony Peeler. He was amazing. Um, Phil Pressy, great point guard. I imagine that Mizzou has probably a better one all time, but I do like Phil Pressy. Um, I used to see him. He would ride a scooter around campus. He was uh yeah scoot scoot and boogie um he was a very small individual um he was like my height uh but phil pressy was great um uh if these starting five slept with each other who would win uh, uh i don't think it's particularly close <laughs> like I think if you put these two lists in front of like your average fan of sports they would say to all of these who? Exactly. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. Uh, Everybody's yeah. heard of Will Chamberlain. <laughs> Danny Manning is like a top two all-time college basketball player, top two or three. Um, I think that's mostly consensus that, yeah, he's like a top three, top five all-time college basketball player. Paul Pierce went on to have like a 15, 18-year career in the NBA. Um, Sharon Collins is really overweight but um, is amazing. At basketball and uh, Darnell Valentine, I also think is a national champion. So. so very impressive. And what's crazy to me is that as impressive as Kansas basketball is, Missouri is still superior. It's crazy. <laughs> it how is much crazy. The University of Missouri is the University of Kansas. It is truly crazy, mind-boggling. I know it's just crazy, but it feels good to be on the right side of the line. Well, they haven't always been on the right side, oh, but I yeah, I hear you. In, in this situation, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes. Historically, yes. we were on the wrong side. Now we are on the right side. Amen. We have uh, turned from our wickedness. We are now on the right path. Aren't we all?
right. At least I hope. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, this is going to be uh, much shorter uh, because we're looking at the clock. The clock. And uh, I'm beginning to wonder if we should uh, even do this in space or anything like that. Um, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I don't know. This is your show. I'm just along for the ride. All right. Uh, what I would like to do is extend an offer right now for you to come onto the podcast and just be sure that this is a live episode of Space Trash. Oh, man. I think I can manage that. I ain't doing much else with my life right now. So. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys so much for hopping onto the live today to hear all about Missouri versus Kansas. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. The, uh, bit about space trash but we we can say the sequel will be dropping this summer uh we're gonna actually record some video for it tomorrow morning that's the plan and uh we, we will say a couple things so go back right now we'll give you some time to go review uh episode six of just episode six uh just trying to save earth so you can get some context for uh, our next episode and uh this amazing song that's about to drop i think it will end with this. Where do you think Space Trash will end up as their top position on the Billboard Top 100 chart? Will it reach the top 100? Will it reach top 75, 50, 25, top 10, number one? How high can Space Trash fly? How high can Space Trash fly? Uh, y'all... Just because there's there's so many politics in kind of like what becomes popular radio, oh, yeah. I can't really say what I think it'll make on the Billboard. Like I think it would be insane for it to not make the top 100. I can say definitively that I think this will be a top two Jimmy Chuckles and the Fire Ants song and video. Okay. I don't know that anything will ever top. Uh, um, pebbles and stones. Yeah. I just don't. It is. It's just. Uh, it slaps. It's a bop. Yeah. Um, sentimentality high. Um, execution high. Videos just together high. Um, it's like ten minutes long. It's insane. It's really like a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, so I just, I just, I think our musical career is. Um, I won't say like downhill. It's definitely downhill, but it's like plateaued. So it's still higher than most people's highs, um, but it's lower than than our highest point. Um, but I do think that it will be um, a true work of art. All right. So get looking forward to that. Uh, again, you can follow us uh, on Spotify, on YouTube to catch all all the episodes of Just Fine the podcast. Be sure to go back and watch episode six. Chuckles in the Fire Ants, Biggie Bob, and Poker Time. And uh, any, any final thoughts, anything you wish I would have asked you here on the podcast? Um, uh, I'm also a Bill Self stan. <laughs> okay, I should have asked you, are you a Bill Self stan? You should have, yeah. And you are. I am. Wow, that is incredible. Uh, thank you so much. Great shot!